So I've been making these Super Nintendo boards for a couple of years at this point. I figured it was finally time to make a video on how to use them. Um, I do have written guides that go into a lot more detail about this board. So I definitely recommend checking those out too. Uh, but this video hopefully will give you a good overview on how to make a game with one of them. I'm not really used to making videos, so this is mostly unscripted. I'm just going through the process of making a game. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Bear with me. Um, the game I'll be making today is a translated version of Tales of Fantasia. Uh, this game was never released in the US. This is a Super Famicom version. Um, so there is a translation patch that I've applied to the game. Um, so I'm going to be using that. I'm not going to go into how I prepared the ROM or anything like that. Um, you can check that on the guide. It's a bit more, I think it's a bit more conducive to a written guide instead of a video guide. Uh, at least I don't want to make a video guide about it. So um, this game, Tales of Fantasia, it's a pretty good game. Uh, it's the largest commercially released uh, Super Nintendo or Super Famicom game. It's 48 megabits large or 6 megabytes. So in order to accommodate that size, I'm using the advanced board to make it. Um, I just got them in purple. I kind of like them. I don't know if I'll stick with this color or not, but uh, you might see them in green as well. But I like how they look, so hopefully I can keep that color. This is the version 3.3. It's very similar to other boards, especially version 3 boards. Um, it's mostly just like silk screen changes, some, some of the writing on here. It's a bit different. Functionality is exactly the same. So the old ones will work too, and the new ones will work as well. So hopefully this video should cover a process similar to this board. Um, but you might notice a few minor differences. So as you can see, it's pretty packed. There's a lot of... A lot of parts that go on this board so there's a lot of different features um, including multi-cart support um, which I might go into another video at some point point. Um, and oh out on the back I added a QR code here so you can scan that when you get it um, to be directly linked to the guide for this board so quick explanation about the board you might see that there are two rows of holes here for ROM 1 and ROM 2 um, so that is to set the game in either high ROM or low ROM mode, mode 20 for low ROM, mode 21 for high ROM. Uh, the bottom sockets, I'll show you here. So this chip sits, sits in the bottom sockets like this. Well, it's a little hard to get in, but bottom sockets for low ROM, top sockets for high ROM. Um, Tales of Fantasia is what's known as an EX high ROM game or a mode 25. Um, and as far as I know, it's the only game released that uses that type of mapping. Um, but it's almost the same as high ROM, so any EX high ROM games you make, um, which should just be this one, uh, will be using the high ROM sockets. So like I said, um, I've already prepared the ROM file, and I've burdened them to two 27C322 EEPROMs. Um, these hold 32 megabits each. Since it's a 48 megabit game, you could use a 32 megabit and a 16 megabit chip, but there's no reason you can't use two 32 megabits. Um, and these will go in the high RAM sockets on ROM 1 and ROM 2. Um, you can see in U3 and U4 I have marked there. Um, and this game also uses 64 kilobits of RAM. So I have this SRAM chip here um, that's uh, six, uh, 62 256 chip, which is 256 kilobits. But you can configure this board to uh, run at 64 kilobits instead. Most games don't really care if you use more RAM than you need, um, but sometimes some games uh, will do a RAM check as a security check to see if it's running on a bootleg card or something like that. And it'll give you an error screen if you don't give the correct amount of RAM. So it's, it's really easy to just set it to the correct amount on the back here. I'll show you that later. Um, and then the other important chip here is the CIC chip. Um, I have it on a PIC 12629 chip. Um, this just is the region lockout chip, and you'll need that if you're running your game in an original, unmodded Super Nintendo or a Super Famicom. But if you're using something like the Retron or a, a Super Retro Trio, they usually don't require the region chip, so you don't have to put it in for those. But might as well put it in. Um, I'm going to be using it on my original Super Nintendo, so I do need it. So let's just go down the line of the other parts we have to put on this board. Um, next is U6 and U7 right here. Those are for multiplexer chips. I will be using the 74HCT257s, right here. 
Um, you need two of them, and if you're making this board, if you're making a game yourself with this board, you need those for any game you would make. Um, the next one is the RAM decoder chip, which is U8, and for that I'll be using a 74HCT139 that goes either here or here. So you'll see there's two sockets. One is U8L and the other one is U8H. You only need one, um, depending on if you're using high ROM or low ROM. But if you put both in, the game will still work. So that's good for like a test card or something like that. Um, the L stands for low ROM, the H stands for high ROM, obviously. Um, and since I said before, this is a high ROM, I'm gonna be using the high ROM sockets. I'll just put one in for the high ROM right there. And uh, if you're making a game that doesn't use RAM, doesn't have an SRAM chip on it, you don't need to have that decoder in there. You just need to solder this, these pads right here. You just have to bridge this and that'll bypass it. So it saves you a part. And now a few other parts. Uh, U9 is the is another decoder, another 139 decoder right here. You need that for every game. Um, it has to deal with enabling the multiplexer chips. And then another function is putting it into the extended memory mode for EX High ROM. So you do need them for every cart. Um, and then U10 right next to it, uh, right here, is a flip-flop chip. You only need those for multi-carts, and I'm not making a multi-cart, so I don't need that one. And for each of these chips, um, you're going to need, well, you should have a ceramic capacitor, a uh, ceramic decoupling capacitor, like these. Um, you definitely need one for the CIC, because you'll have some problems if you don't have it in there. The other ones are not mandatory, but you really should have them. Um, they go in the slots, you know, next to the other chips, like C3 goes here, which is a, one of the capacitors, C4. Each chip has one. And then the other capacitor on here is C1, which is a bulk capacitor. I use a 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor for that, um, which are pretty cheap. Like this, a little can. So all in all, I will need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ceramic capacitors, 100 nanofarads, and then one electrolytic capacitor. And then finally, for the for the RAM, I will need some more discrete parts. Uh, these six up here. So first ones we got there are D1 and D2, which are diodes. Um, I recommend using 1N4148, mostly due to the uh, low reverse leakage current rating. They're rated all the way down at 50 nanoamps, and the lower this rating, the longer your save battery will last. Then we have R1 and RC, our resistors, just uh, 1Ks, 1 kilo ohm. So I have these here. And then RB is a 10K. So I have that here. And then finally, uh, probably the most important and the most annoying part is the NPN transistor, which is right there. I have a space for a through hole or a surface mount. Um, I use 2N3904s. I have also tried 2N2222s. Um, the, they're only annoying because some packages will have some of the pins flipped. So I have them marked here. If you can see C, B, and E. So that's a collector, base, and emitter. And if you don't use the parts that like I sell, you want to make sure that your transistor has the right pinout for that. I've had a few people have problems with that, and usually it's just that their transistor's in backwards, but it doesn't match the footprint like this. You have to put it in the other way. So just watch out for that. I have it for the parts that I buy. So if you have some issues with that, check the data sheet. Um, and of course, we'll need a coin cell battery, the ubiquitous backup battery. I've got one up here. I use these pre-tabbed ones. Um, probably not the highest quality, but they're good enough for what I want them for. Um, if you'll notice in this, I have a bunch of different holes and large pads there. That's to accommodate um, a lot of different battery holders and battery sizes. Um, Footprints. I basically just went on DigiKey and looked at most of the more popular um, footprints and just made it compatible with a lot of them. No one's really complained about any incompatibility since I've done that. So that should cover you. And so, yeah, you could also use like a coin cell holder like this. And if you want to buy them separately without the tabs uh, spot welded on there, 
I do not recommend soldering tabs to a battery. If you don't have tabs on the battery, you should buy a socket. <laughs> so now that we've got all the parts, it's time to solder it up. And then uh, we'll look at the back of the board. There's some configurations we gotta do on the back too. So let's get these parts soldered in. So when you're soldering all these parts in, you wanna be sure that they're in the correct orientation and uh, pushed all the way into the board, especially parts that stick up uh, easily, like the transistor or the resistors and the diodes. There isn't a ton of clearance to the front of the cart shell, so it, it might be worthwhile to maybe put them in the board and only solder in the corner pins or one of the pins on a part to do a fit test in the cartridge before you fully solder everything in, just in case you need to take it out and reseat it to make it fit a bit better. And uh, while you're soldering, you want to make sure you don't accidentally solder two points together that shouldn't be soldered together. For the most part, every pin should only have solder on itself and not touching any other pin. It's okay if you get solder in the empty holes, that's not going to hurt anything. Just make sure it's not touching another hole anywhere or another pin. Another thing you want to make sure of is that you don't get any solder on the cart edge pins on the bottom. Uh, that, that ruins the longevity of the contacts so they'll wear out a lot faster. So you might want to put some tape over them with uh, masking tape or capped on tape or something while you solder the parts in. Uh, once you finish soldering all the parts, you can go back with some uh, isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip or a toothbrush to clean it up. Uh, I forgot to do that in this video, so you see a bit of spatter around the board. Uh, which doesn't ruin a game, it just doesn't look as nice. But you might want to at least clean the card edge with some uh, IPA just to be safe. So in the middle of that, um, my phone died, so kind of skipped through that soldering a bit. But here it is, um, almost fully soldered. We got to take care of some of these selector pads here. So let's see, let's start over here on the bottom right corner, or bottom left corner rather. So we've got pads for each of these EEPROMs. So I'm using the 27C32s in the high ROM configuration, so I'll be soldering both of those high. We've got one here for EX mode or normal mode. Um, EX mode is uh, basically anything larger than 32 megabits, um, and Tails is, so I'll be soldering it to EX mode. There's a bit of a nuance for what actually counts as an EX high ROM game. I think I mentioned earlier that uh, Tails is EX high ROM or mode 25. Um, it's not really worth going into right now. It's, there's more information on the website about it. But basically, if your game is larger than 32 megabits, you want to go EX mode. Um, and then right here, obviously, it's a single game without a multi cart. And of course, high ROM. And then up here, these pads are only for dealing with the RAM. So if you don't have any RAM on your board, you don't need to bother with these. Uh, it won't really do anything if you, you know, still solder them. But uh, mine, mine uses RAM, so we have to configure them. They're kind of self-explanatory, but let's let's just knock these out. So we've got the RAM enable right there. Uh, what's handy about that is that if you want to clear the RAM after you've made a game. Instead of taking the battery off to clear it, you just have to desolder that, and it'll reset. Um, that's usually more helpful for test cartridges. Um, you don't really want to reset it after you've made it, but it's there if you need it. And then we've got another multi-card multi or single game pad selection right there, and high ROM and low ROM. And now this size selection right here is a bit needs a bit of explanation. Um, there's sizes of SRAM that you can use there, basically. You solder them based on how big the uh, RAM is that you need. And obviously you can only have as much RAM as you put on here. So if I put a 64K RAM and I want 256K, I can't get it. So mine uses 64, so I'll be soldering the bottom two here, greater than 16, and then less than or equal to 64 on the top, and less than or equal to 256 on the top as well. So the bottom, top, top. And so I'll, yeah, I'll get those soldered up. And so you can see there how I solder the middle pad to the top or bottom or left or right based on what I need for the three-wheel ones. So we're all good to go. So now that we've got everything soldered up the way it should be, ready to put it in and test it out. I've got these aftermarket uh, SNES shells. Uh, I think I got them from AliExpress. And I've got this nice aftermarket uh, label here that I got from Etsy. Uh, I probably have to get another one because it's. I had to take it off to recenter it, so that was my own fault. It's peeling off a bit, but it's good enough for now. So let's put this in. Now uh, you've got to put the parts. You'll see a note on here. Uh, 
faces the back of the Super Nintendo right there. So this side goes in the back of the cartridge like that. But now make sure everything fits nice and snug. You might have to, you know, when you put these parts in, you want to make sure you have them as flat as possible, especially this transistor is a bit tricky. Um, you can always bend this part down, uh, kind of lay it flat. You could even put the resistors on the other side of the board if you want to, um, just to make it fit a little bit easier. Put it down like that. And I think these just snap in. These aren't really screws, which is kind of annoying. But... There we go. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, um, this one closed pretty easily. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the board to fit with when you're closing the case up. Um, there's these little tabs here that sometimes interfere. Um, so what you could do instead is just trim them off. Um, not really a huge deal. So, All right, it looks like this game's uh, ready to test. So here I have my uh, Super Retro Trio 3. I'm currently running a, uh, an NES game in the NES slot, testing it out. So I'm going to be switching over to the Super Nintendo. So let's turn this off. Put this in here. Now this won't test the region lockout chip because the Super Retro 3, Super Retro Trio 3 doesn't care, but uh, looks like the game's working. So there we go. So if you run into a problem where it won't boot, usually the problem is uh, some some kind of wrong configuration on the board, or a bad solder joint, or two solder joints touching where they shouldn't be, so you want to check for that. Uh, another common problem is the ROM file preparation. Um, so for that, I recommend getting a board that you can put sockets on like this, so you can throw in some parts to test before you solder them in permanently. Uh, that has saved a lot of headaches for me in the past. So hopefully this is a helpful video for everybody. Um, you know, if you get run into trouble or you want some more information, please check out the website. The guide is a lot more detailed. I think it's a lot better than this video will be, but um, hopefully this was still helpful. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.